Hello class, so today we're gonna talk about the geography of New Mexico. Um, and so while I lecture, I need you guys to take Cornell notes. I'm giving you guys two options. Uh, you can either take notes um, in the template that I made, the Word template, uh, the Word document that I uh, put the template in. You could go ahead and download it and do your Cornell notes in that, or you can make your own Cornell notes on notebook paper, uh, but just know um, you're gonna have to upload these. So if uh, you do the, use the Word document, you're gonna have to upload that document into the assignment. If you use your own paper to take notes, uh, you're gonna have to either scan it, uh, take a picture of it, um, and then upload that to the assignment as well. Okay. Um, so right now, what I want, I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the uh, the video. Um, so go ahead and pause the video as well and uh, get your notes organized so we can start. Now that you're ready, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So New Mexico has four natural provinces and these natural provinces are uh, the Rocky Mountain province, uh, the Great Plains province, uh, the Basin and Range province, and the Colorado Plateau province. Um, now if you have to pause the video at any time uh, so you can take your notes, uh, that is fine. So we're going to go on to the next slide. Um, and so this is uh, the map showing those four provinces. Uh, you kind of see the Colorado, Colorado Plateaus up in the northeast part of the state, uh, where Farmington, Gallup, Grants, um, all that area. Uh, the Southern Rocky Mountains is up there in you know Taos, up there in the you know, northern uh, part close to Colorado. Uh, the Great Plains province is, of course, eastern New Mexico. We got Roswell, Clovis, Carlsbad, Artesia, Portales. Um, and of course, the Basin and Range province is where we live in. Uh, and it consists of Santa Fe, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, Silver City, Deming, Lordsburg. Um, so again, uh, we live in the Basin and Range province. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Rocky Mountain province here. Uh, so again, it's located in north central New Mexico. Um, its climate is unpredictable, uh, unpredictable weather. Uh, they have very mild summers, cold winters. Uh, they get a lot of rain. They get a lot of snow. So a lot of the snow uh, and rain that we get is up there. Um, again, uh, plants and animals. Uh, Forests with pine, fir, spruce trees, uh, of course, deer, antelope, bears. Um, again, a lot of different types of animals up there in uh, northern uh, New Mexico. Um, of course, settlement patterns. Uh, it's where most people lived, especially when those uh, first settlers came um, into uh, New Mexico. They didn't really settle in the desert part. You know, they settled up there, you know, along the Rio Grande River, so they had, you know, water. Um, of course, up in the mountain regions where there was more rain and snow. And of course, a lot of the Pueblos, uh, the natives lived up there as well along the Rio Grande. And some of the Pueblos also lived in, uh, uh, in the desert part as well. But anyway, that is the Rocky Mountain province. Again, it includes places like Taos, uh, Las Vegas, Raton. Um, again, this is just an example of some towns in the Rocky Mountain province. Uh, the Great Plains province, uh, again, uh, eastern part of New Mexico. Uh, this is where you're going to just see flat land. There's no mountains, not much trees unless you grow them yourselves. Um, again, once you get out of the mountains, coming from Rio Doso and the, get, getting close to Roswell, I mean, from there, all you see is just flat land. Um, again, the climate, it's very dry, uh, treeless. Uh, again, during the summers, it's very hot. During the wintertime, it's very cold. 
and you will get a lot of snow in this region. Uh, some of the plants, a uh, few trees, most of the trees are actually uh, grow, uh, you know, are planted by, uh, by uh, people. Again, mostly desert plants. Uh, again, they had bats, coyotes, snakes, roadrunners. Again, you're gonna find roadrunners all over the state of New Mexico. You know, it is, you know, the state bird. Uh, coyotes, you should find those all over the state as well. Snakes, you know, rattlesnakes, all kinds of different snakes. Um, now the settlement patterns, least populated area. Um, again, Roswell, Clovis, Hobbs, Carlsbad. Uh, the truth is, if it wasn't for oil, uh, not many people would probably be living in this region. Uh, it was, you know, oil, you know, the uh, finding of oil in this region where a lot of these towns, Roswell, Clovis, Hobbs, and Carlsberg, went from being very tiny to being uh, very uh, big uh, because of the oil. Because again, it oil created jobs, and so people moved to these places so they could work in the oil fields. The next uh, is the Basin and Range Province. Uh, again, it's located in the south central part of the state between uh, the Rio Grande and the Pecos River. Again, those are the two main rivers. We'll talk about those here in a little bit. Uh, climate, hot and dry. Um, again, during the summertime, we get a lot of rain uh, because of the monsoon season. Um, during the wintertime, eh, we don't get too much rain, but we do sometimes. Snows once in a while. Plants and animals, uh, we got the desert grasslands with scattered mountains. You know, we got the Floridas. Uh, we got uh, Cook's Peak, Black and Red Mountain. So, I mean, Demi is surrounded by mountains. Um, again, you go to Portales, New Mexico, which is in the Great Plains, and there's no mountains at all. You know, I lived in Portales. I went to Eastern New Mexico as a freshman in college and I hated it. You know, it was just so different from where I was from. Uh, of course, sometimes you would get a smell of cows and then the oil and uh, that wasn't uh, fun, but you know, I stayed there about a year and then moved back to uh, Deming, ended up going to Western uh, the following school year. Um, but anyway, settlement patterns, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, well, you know, Santa Fe is kind of like in the middle between the basin and range and uh, the mountain, uh, uh, you know, the mountain region. It's kind of like in between. Uh, so just heads up on that. So again, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, Deming, Alamogordo, Silver City, Hatch. Again, all these towns lie in the basin and range province. Now, the Colorado Plateau province is in northwestern New Mexico. Again, the climate there is very dry. Uh, plants and animals, uh, desert plants, uh, grassy meadows. Uh, they have a lot of mice. Again, we have mice here too. They have prairie dogs, owl, deer. Again, you're going to find deer pretty much anywhere. Uh, again, settlement, pattern, settlement patterns. Again, this is where the Navajo settled. Um, the Navajo reservations found in this area. It's very, again, it's least populated area in the state. Uh, a lot of farmers, a lot of ranching, um, again, and there is a lot of large mineral resources in this area. So again, here's just some pictures of these areas. Here, we're gonna go ahead and move on. So now we're going to talk about water uh, here in New Mexico. So again, it's the most precious commodity. Again, we need it. Without it, we can't live. Um, again, New Mexico has been in a drought since I think about 1992. So uh, water, I mean, it's we, we got to be saving it. We got to. Uh, find other ways uh, to get it, you know, because, you know, luckily right now we have water, but one day we can end up like some other places here in the U.S. where uh, water, uh, there's not much of it. So lakes and rivers make up only 0.002% of New Mexico's total surface water. 
So what that means is most of our water is under the ground. Um, now the big big users is irrigation and agriculture areas. You know, farming it's huge. Um, Anyway, irrigation for agriculture areas. So a large percentage of uh, water rights will be used uh, for farming irrigation. Uh, when farmers, ranchers want, uh, run out of their water uh, from the Rio Grande, they have to pump from wells, which depletes uh, the agrifier. Uh, some farmers are using methods that do not deplete the water supply as fast. Um, alternate rural irrigation, and also choosing more water efficient crops like cotton. Uh, again, rivers, they are extremely important. It supplies water to plants, animals, and people. Uh, some dry up in the summer months and others flow year round. Um, I'm pretty sure I can remember, you know, growing up and throughout the year, there was always water in uh, the Rio Grande. Um, today, because of the drought, that's not the case. You know, uh, you only get water in there uh, during the spring and the summer times, and then in the winter times, there's no water. Um, but again, I can remember there was water, you know, during the winter times um, in, you know, Rio Grande while I was growing up. Uh, there are six major rivers in the state. There is the San Juan, uh, the Chama, uh, the Canadian, uh, the Rio Grande, the Pecos, and the Gila. Uh, the two largest rivers are the Rio Grande and the Pecos. The Rio Grande is actually the biggest because uh, it flows, you know, from Colorado all the way to into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, again, snowmelt provides 50% of the surface water in New Mexico. So up in the Rockies, uh, it gets a lot of snow up there. And once that snow melts, it flows right into these rivers. Um, the Rio Grande is the most uh, sufficient uh, river in the state by far. It flows from southern Colorado through New Mexico and through Texas and out into the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, we have uh, much smaller rivers. Uh, we have one right here in Gaming, the Memphis River. It's very small. It's not going to be one of the major rivers. It's rarely ever any water in there. Um, again, but I kind of feel probably about 70, 80, 90 uh, years ago, that river used to flow pretty good. Um, but again, we're in a drought now, and so uh, there's no water. Anyway, here's some uh, pictures of some of the uh, rivers. Uh, the top one is the Rio Chama. Uh, the middle is the San Juan. River and of course the bottom one is the Rio Grande. So again, this is the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande system, and you can kind of see where it starts there in southern uh, Colorado, and it flows right through uh, New Mexico. Um, again, it is the border between uh, Mexico um, and uh, the United States. We'll talk about how that, you know, caused a war uh, in the 1840s between the United States and uh, and Mexico, um, because they were arguing what the boundaries were, what the board, what the real border was between um, tech, which separated Texas and Mexico. Anyway, lakes. Uh, New Mexico large lakes are man-made. There is only one natural lake in New Mexico, uh, and those are the bottomless lakes. Uh, the rest of the lakes are actually uh, man-built, uh, and they were built uh, to store water. Uh, some of the other lakes include Navajo Lake, Allison Butte Lake, uh, Brantley Lake, uh, Abikiki, I'm pr pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, Lake, and then Blue Water Lake. Uh, the lakes provide water to local communities and help stimulate tourism in the area. And I can remember being young and going to Allison Butte, and that place was just full of water. 
Um, and I can remember going the last time a few years back and just being shocked on how uh, much of the water is gone. You know, it just shows you the drought that we are facing here in New Mexico, and it's uh, very serious. Now, we're going to talk about the Isakia. Uh, it's pronounced. Uh, it's pronounced in Spanish. Um, anyway, it's an irrigation canal used to water crops. Uh, this has been used since the first uh, settlers came to New Mexico. You know, they kind of saw what the Pueblos were doing and kind of took what they were doing and kind of made their own thing. And so this, the uh, Esequia has actually been used uh since you know 1600 it's uh very popular a lot of uh, farmers use it a lot of communities um anyway it's an irrigation canal used to water crops uh, new mexico has grown uh because of eco uh, economic activities again mining uh there in grant county there's a lot of mines you know it creates a lot of jobs. There's ranching, again, ranches all over the state. Agriculture, again, along the uh, the Rio Grande, there's just farms everywhere. Um, you'll find farms here in here in Luna County as well. Uh, again, the casinos, which are run by uh, the tribal uh, communities. Um, there's a bunch of them. Um, tourism. Again, there's a lot of places that people like to visit here in New Mexico. We got uh, the Carlsbad Caverns. Uh, we got, uh, you know, the City of Rocks. We have uh, White Sands. We have a lot of ruins, native ruins like Chaco Canyon, um, the Aztec ruins up in Aztec, New Mexico. Um, and then there's also other ruins uh, that were Spanish Pueblo uh, towns that were abandoned. Uh, by, you know, had been abandoned since 1680 um, that, you know, are still there and people go and visit that stuff. Um, but the state makes millions of dollars every year from tourism. Um, of course, one that's not included is the movie industry. Um, again, uh, Hollywood is ma making a lot of movies here in New Mexico. Uh, again, I can remember 2007, they filmed the beginning parts of uh, the Indiana Jones movie, and you know they built some parts of the river uh, uh, Logan. Um, again, a lot of movies here in New Mexico. Netflix, I believe, is going to start making a lot of uh, TV and movies here in New Mexico as well. And so that's going to bring a lot of um, um, revenue uh, to the state. And of course, that revenue goes to you know funding. Uh, education, healthcare, the police, firefighters, and all that. Um, again, oil. Oil is huge. Oil and gas. Those industries are huge. Uh, not only they create a lot of jobs, uh, but it also brings in a lot of revenue for the state. And of course, a lot of high technology. Um, and that's uh, huge as well. Anyway, uh, that's uh, a PowerPoint for today. Uh, so just be sure that you guys uh, take notes on all this. Um, again, if you have to pause so you can write down your notes, you can do that.